in the heart of an ancient forest, shrouded in the mists of time, stood the remnants of what was once a grand manor. Its history was marred by tales of the supernatural, stories that whispered through the village like the chill of an unseen presence. They spoke of the manor's last occupant, a reclusive figure whose obsession with the afterlife led to a series of macabre experiments, the details of which were lost to time. The manor, now a mere shadow of its former self, had become the focal point of local lore. It was said that on moonless nights, a spectral light would dance through the shattered windows, casting eerie shadows that twisted and writhed like tortured souls. Eager to uncover the truth, a group of paranormal investigators ventured into the forest, their path lit only by the feeble glow of their flashlights. The air was thick with an unspoken dread, a silent warning to turn back. But driven by a mix of curiosity and bravado, they pressed on until the imposing silhouette of the manor loomed before them. The front door, once a grand affair, now hung off its hinges, a silent invitation into the unknown. As they stepped inside, the air grew cold, a tangible cold that seemed to seep into their bones. The house was a labyrinth of corridors and rooms, each telling a story of decay. Their equipment, designed to detect the faintest hint of paranormal activity, remained eerily silent as they explored the ground floor. It wasn't until they reached the cellar that the atmosphere shifted. A sudden drop in temperature was the first sign, followed by the soft, almost imperceptible whisper of voices. The devices sprang to life, their screens flickering with a frenetic energy that mirrored the team's growing unease. In the dim light of the cellar, amidst the relics of a bygone era, they found it. An ancient tome, its pages yellowed with age, lay on a dusty table. The book was bound in an unidentifiable material, and it was filled with cryptic writings and unsettling illustrations that depicted rituals of communication with the dead. As they poured over the tome, the air around them began to stir. A gentle breeze at first that grew in intensity until it was a howling gale, forcing them to their knees. The voices grew louder, a cacophony of whispers that filled their minds with images of unspeakable horror. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the storm abated. The team, shaken to their core, gathered their belongings and fled the manor. The tome left lying open on the table, its pages fluttering as if in warning. The events of that night would remain etched in their memories. A chilling reminder of the thin veil that separates the world of the living from the realm of the dead, but the true nature of the manor's last occupant and the source of the spectral light remained a mystery, a story left to hang in the air like a ghostly apparition, waiting for the next unwary soul to uncover its secrets. As the investigators made their hasty retreat through the dense underbrush of the forest, the impressive silence of the night was shattered by the sound of their frantic breaths. The darkness seemed to press in on them from all sides, a tangible force that threatened to swallow them whole. Behind them, the manor stood silent, a sentinel guarding secrets too terrifying to behold. In the days that followed, the incident at the manor became the subject of much speculation. The team, 
renowned for their rational explanations of the paranormal, found themselves at a loss for words, their experiences defying all logic. The footage from that night was plagued by anomalies of static interference, distorted voices, and fleeting shadows that seemed to flit across the screen. Determined to find answers, the team resolved to delve deeper into the history of the manor and its last known occupant, a task that led them to the archives of the local library. Buried within the dusty tomes and faded manuscripts, they uncovered a tale of tragedy and obsession. The manor's final master was a man of science, a brilliant mind whose quest for knowledge led him down a dark path. Consumed by the loss of his beloved wife, he turned to the occult, seeking a way to breach the veil between life and death. His experiments, shrouded in secrecy, drew the ire of the local populace, who whispered of unholy rituals and the disappearance of those who dared to question his methods. Armed with this new knowledge, the team sought out the expertise of a renowned occultist, a figure both revered and feared in equal measure. Under her guidance, they prepared to confront the forces that lingered within the manor, armed with ancient rites and protective talismans. As night fell, they returned to the manor, the atmosphere charged with an electric tension, the air was thick with the scent of decay, a reminder of the manor's long abandonment. With each step, the sense of unease grew, a primal instinct warning them of unseen dangers lurking in the shadows. The cellar, the heart of the manor's dark history, became the focus of their ritual. The team formed a circle, the occultist's chance rising above the whisper of the wind. The air shimmered with energy, the barrier between worlds thinning until it was almost palpable. It was then that the manor revealed its true nature. The shadows coalesced into forms both grotesque and pitiful. The tormented souls bound to the manor by the master's unholy experiments. Their wails filled the air cacophony of despair that threatened to overwhelm the team's resolve. But among the chaos, a figure emerged, its presence commanding silence, the master of the manor. His visage, twisted by his obsession, stood before them, his eyes burning with a malevolent light. He spoke of a realm beyond death, of secrets that promised power and knowledge beyond mortal comprehension. The team, caught in the grip of terror, found themselves facing a choice that would determine their fate, to delve deeper into the darkness, to uncover the truths hidden within the manor's walls, or to flee, leaving its secrets buried forever. As the master's voice echoed through the cellar, the ritual reached its climax the veil torn asunder. What lay beyond was a glimpse into the abyss, a realm of nightmares that defied understanding. And in that moment of revelation, the story takes a breath, pausing on the precipice of the unknown, leaving us to wonder what horrors or truths the next visit to the manor might unveil. In the chilling silence, that followed the master's revelation. The team stood paralyzed, their minds grappling with the eldritch truths that unfolded before them. The boundary between the living and the dead had been breached, unleashing forces that defied all earthly understanding. As the occultist continued her incantations, a fort of spectral energy began to form within the cellar, its core pulsating with an eerie, otherworldly light. The air grew colder, a 
frost that seemed to emanate from the very fabric of the realm beyond. The tormented souls, once bound to the master's will, swirled around the vortex, their cries growing more desperate, more anguished. The team, encircled by the tempest of the supernatural, found their protective talismans glowing with a faint, protective light. It was a barrier, thin and fragile, yet it was all that shielded them from being consumed by the maelstrom of dark energy. In the eye of the storm, the master's form began to waver, his figure stretching and distorting as if struggling to maintain its presence in the physical realm. His voice, now a mere whisper carried by the wind, spoke of a gate, a threshold that once crossed would grant him the power to transcend death itself. The occultist, her voice steady amidst the chaos, urged the team to focus, to channel their collective will against the dark tide. It was a battle of minds, a struggle to close the rift before the manor, and all within it were pulled into the abyss. The ritual reached its zenith, the ancient words resonating through the cellar, weaving a tapestry of light that clashed with the darkness. The master's form flickered, caught between two worlds, his ambition clashing with the team's desperate desire for salvation. And then, a silence, deep and all-consuming. The vortex began to recede, the spectral energy dissipating into the ether. The souls, released from their torment, faded into the light. Their whispers, a haunting melody of gratitude and sorrow. But the master, his figure now barely visible, uttered a final vow promise of return, of revenge. His words, a curse woven from the depths of his despair, lingered in the air, a chilling reminder of the manor's dark legacy. The team, exhausted yet relieved, gathered their strength, their minds reeling from the ordeal. The manor, once a beacon of the supernatural, now stood silent its secrets sealed once more. But the story does not end here. The master's curse, a thread left dangling in the tapestry of the manor's history, hints at mysteries yet to be unraveled, at truths that lie waiting in the shadows. The veil has been drawn closed, but for how long and at what cost? As the dawn breaks, Casting its light upon the manor, the story pauses, leaving us to ponder the fate of those who dare to tread the thin line between the known and the unknown, between the light and the darkness that dwells within us all. In the cold light of dawn, the manor stood silent, a stark reminder of the night's harrowing events. The team, weary and worn, couldn't shake the feeling of unease that clung to them like a second skin. The master's final words echoed in their minds, a foreboding promise that the end was not yet in sight. As they made their way back to civilization, the events at the manor became a blur, a nightmare that felt all too real. The footage they had captured, once a source of pride, now served as a haunting reminder of the thin veil between worlds they had so recklessly tampered with. Seeking answers, they turned to ancient texts and experts in the arcane, delving deeper into the lore surrounding the manor and its last master. They uncovered tales of a dark pact an agreement struck with entities beyond human comprehension, granting the master knowledge and power at a terrible cost. 
The more they learned, the clearer it became that the manor was but a piece of a larger, more sinister puzzle. The master's experiments had not been mere attempts to breach the veil, but were part of a ritual, centuries in the making, designed to bring about a convergence, a moment when the barriers between dimensions would weaken allowing the entities to cross over into our world. Armed with this knowledge, the team realized the master's curse was not a mere threat, but a warning. The ritual they had interrupted was incomplete, its final steps thwarted by their intervention. But the master's spirit, bound to the manor by his own dark designs, lingered waiting for the opportunity to fulfill his unholy quest. Driven by a sense of responsibility, the team vowed to prevent the convergence. They enlisted the help of scholars and mystics, forming a coalition to safeguard the knowledge and artifacts necessary to stop the ritual. But as they delved deeper, they found themselves caught in a web of ancient conspiracies and modern-day cults, all dedicated to bringing the master's vision to fruition. The manor, once a forgotten relic, became the epicenter of a shadow war, a battleground for forces beyond human understanding. The team, now guardians of a truth too dangerous to reveal, fought to protect the veil, knowing that their failure would spell disaster not just for them, but for the world. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, the true scale of the threat became apparent. The convergence was not just a merging of dimensions, but a cataclysm that would reshape reality itself. The master, his spirit fueled by centuries of rage and betrayal, had set in motion events that, if left unchecked, would lead to an age of darkness. The story weaves through shadowed corridors of power, where ancient rites and digital espionage intertwine, each revelation drawing the team closer to the heart of the darkness. Yet, with each step forward, the path becomes more treacherous, the enemies more ruthless. And as the final pieces of the ritual come into view, the team must confront the possibility that the master's curse is not just a threat to them, but a prophecy of what is to come. The story lingers on the brink of an abyss, its depths filled with nightmares waiting to be unleashed, leaving us to wonder what horrors the next chapter will unveil in the ongoing saga of the manor and the shadowy figures that seek to control its power. As the coalition delved deeper into the web of mysteries surrounding the manor and the impending convergence, they stumbled upon a series of cryptic symbols etched into ancient artifacts, each piece hinting at a location pivotal to the ritual's completion. These sites, scattered across the globe, were connected by a network of ley lines, channels of mystical energy that converged at the manor, the nexus point. The team, now a blend of scientists, historians, and mystics, embarked on a perilous journey to secure these artifacts. Each location presented its own challenges guarded by cultists who revered the master as a prophet destined to usher in a new era. The confrontations were harrowing, each victory hard won. But with every artifact they secured, the coalition felt the weight of an unseen clock ticking down to an unknown yet catastrophic event. As they raced against time, team's efforts to decipher the ritual's final steps revealed a chilling truth. The convergence required a catalyst, a soul of pure intent, 
to bridge the gap between worlds. The master, in his final act, had intended to sacrifice his beloved, believing her untainted spirit would fulfill this role. But with the ritual interrupted and the master's spirit bound to the manor, the coalition feared what, or who, could now serve as this catalyst. Amidst this revelation, one of the team members, a young historian with a keen mind and a pure heart, began to experience vivid dreams. These were not mere figments of the imagination, but visions that guided her to hidden chambers within the manor. Each discovery bringing them closer to understanding the master's grand design. Unbeknownst to her, she was becoming entwined with the very fabric of the ritual, her spirit resonating with the ancient energies at play. The coalition's quest took a desperate turn as they realized that their actions, however well-intentioned, might be inadvertently fulfilling the conditions for the convergence. Each artifact secured, each symbol deciphered, seemed to bring the world closer to the brink of chaos. In a race against the gathering storm, the team returned to the manor, their final stand against the forces seeking to complete the ritual, the manor itself, alive with malevolent energy seemed to warp reality around it, its corridors and rooms shifting in impossible ways, designed to confound and trap the unwary. As they navigated this labyrinth, the historian's visions grew more intense, leading them to the heart of the manor, where the veil between worlds was thinnest. Here, the air crackled with power, ancient symbols they had collected, glowing with an otherworldly light. The ritual's final act was upon them, the coalition standing as the last line of defense against the darkness. But as they prepared to face the coming storm, they realized the historian was missing. Drawn away by the siren call of her visions, the story leaves us on the precipice of an unfathomable choice. To save one of their own from becoming the catalyst for the convergence, or to use her unique connection to the ritual to seal the breach once and for all. As the forces of darkness converge on the manor, the boundaries between ally and enemy blur, and the true nature of the sacrifice required is revealed. The tale hangs in the balance, the fate of the world teetering on the edge of a knife, leaving us to ponder the cost of delving into secrets meant to remain hidden, and the shadows that lurk just beyond the light, waiting for their moment to rise in the depths of the manor where the fabric of reality was frayed and torn faced their darkest hour. The air was thick with a palpable sense of dread, a prelude to the impending convergence. The historian, drawn by an invisible force, found herself in a chamber unseen by modern eyes, its walls inscribed with ancient runes that pulsed with a malevolent energy. The team Realizing the gravity of her disappearance, split their forces, some delving deeper into the heart of the manor in search of their colleague, while others prepared to defend against the encroaching darkness that sought to exploit the ritual's completion. As the search party navigated the ever-shifting halls of the manor, they encountered apparitions echoes of the past bound to the master's dark legacy. These spectral entities, trapped between worlds, offered cryptic warnings and puzzles, each solution bringing the team closer to the historian and the truth.
truth behind the convergence. Meanwhile, the defenders faced waves of cultists, their minds twisted by promises of power and rebirth. The battles were fierce. The manor's ancient stones stained with new blood. Each skirmish weakening the barriers that held back the darkness. In the chamber, the historian was caught in a trance. Her consciousness intertwined with the essence of the manor. Visions of the past, present, and possible futures flooded her mind, revealing the master's true intentions. He sought not just to breach the veil, but to merge the realms, creating a world where life and death, reality and nightmare coexisted. His beloved, the intended catalyst, was to be the queen of this new realm, ruling by his side. But the master had not foreseen the resilience of the human spirit, the capacity for love and sacrifice that transcended even his considerable power. The historian, connected to the manor's heart, understood that she was the key, not just to the ritual's completion, but to its undoing. As the defenders regrouped, battered but unbroken, the search party finally reached the chamber. They found the historian aglow with an ethereal light, her eyes reflecting the swirling chaos of the converging realms. Around her, the air shimmered, the veil thinning to the point of collapse. With time running out, the coalition was forced to make an impossible decision. To disrupt the ritual and save their friend could mean unleashing untold horrors upon the world. Yet, to do nothing would ensure the master's vision came to pass, altering reality in ways beyond comprehension. The story reaches a crescendo as the coalition stands divided, their choices echoing in the charged silence of the chamber. The historian, the unwitting key to the ritual, faces her own dilemma, her humanity pitted against the overwhelming force of the convergence. As the energies reach their peak, the manor itself seems to hold its breath, the fate of both realms hanging in the balance. The story pauses here on the brink of revelation, leaving us to ponder the cost of delving too deep into the unknown and the sacrifices required to keep the darkness at bay. In the charged atmosphere of the chamber, with the coalition teetering on the edge of an irrevocable decision, the historian's voice, barely a whisper, cut through the tension. She spoke of visions, a tapestry of potential outcomes, each thread a path leading to salvation or damnation. Her words, imbued with the manor's ancient power, held the weary team in rapt attention, guiding them towards a sliver of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. Outside the chamber, the manor groaned under the strain of the converging energies, its walls bending and twisting as if alive. The defenders, rallying at the entrance, faced an onslaught of shadows that took shape from the very fears and doubts that plagued their minds. Each shadow a test, a reflection of the inner turmoil that could unravel the fabric of their resolve. Within the chamber, the historian revealed the master's oversight, a flaw in the ritual born from his arrogance. The convergence, though powerful, was unstable, reliant on the balance of energies between the realms. This delicate balance could be tipped, she explained, but at a great cost. The ritual could be redirected, not to merge the realms, but to reinforce the barrier, sealing the breach with a purity of purpose that the master had lacked. The 
search party, now protectors of the ritual's key, formed a circle around the historian. Their combined will, fortified by the bonds forged in the fires of their trials, became a beacon of light that pierced the gathering darkness. The ancient runes, sensing the shift in intent, began to glow, not with the malevolent red of before, a serene blue, reflecting the coalition's unified resolve. As the ritual approached its zenith, the forces outside the chamber intensified their assault, the shadows growing more desperate, more tangible, the defenders standing as the last bastion against the darkness, found strength in the historian's revelations, their resolve turning fear fury, doubt into determination. The historian, her voice now a commanding echo that filled the chamber, directed the search party in a counter-ritual, each member playing a crucial role in the redirection of the energies. The ancient artifacts, once tools of the master's dark ambition, became conduits for the coalition's collective will, each piece resonating with the power to mend the fraying veil. As the counter-ritual reached its climax, the chamber was bathed in a blinding light, the convergence point between the realms shimmering like a mirage. The air crackled with electricity, the very essence of reality bending under the weight of the conflicting energies. The story teeters on the precipice of this moment, the outcome hanging in the balance like a delicate pendulum. Will the coalition's efforts be enough to tip the scales in favor of sealing the breach? Or will the shadows, fueled by the master's undying will, find a way to corrupt the ritual, turning their noble intentions into the catalyst Convergence. As the light in the chamber reaches its peak, blurring the lines between the seen and the unseen, the tale pauses, leaving us in suspense. The fate of the realms, the coalition and the historian, caught in the eye of the storm, remains shrouded in mystery, a story waiting to be continued its next chapter lurking in the shadows, ready to unfold. As the light in the chamber reached crescendo, reality itself seemed to bend and warp under the immense pressure of the converging energies. The coalition, standing united in purpose and spirit, poured every ounce of their will into the counter-ritual their voices merging into a single, resonant call that echoed through the ancient halls of the manor. Outside, the defenders, emboldened by the light emanating from the chamber, pushed back against the encroaching shadows with renewed vigor. The darkness, once overwhelming in its assault, began to wane. The figures within it dissolving like mist under the morning sun. In the heart of the chamber, the historian, now the conduit for the ritual's culmination, felt an indescribable connection to the very essence of the manor and beyond. Her vision, once confined to the echoes of the past and the shadow of futures possible, expanded, encompassing the infinite tapestry of existence. In this moment of transcendence, she understood the true nature of the veil, not as a barrier, but as a bridge connecting all life, a sacred boundary to be respected, not breached. With a final collective effort, the counter-ritual reached its zenith, the artifacts pulsating with the combined energies of the coalition, unleashed a wave of pure, radiant light, sweeping through the manor and beyond, 
cleansing the corruption wrought by the master's dark ambitions. As the light faded, the manor, once a nexus of malevolent power, stood silent, its walls no longer bending to the will of unseen forces, but standing firm, a testament to the resilience of those who had dared to defy the darkness. The historian, her role as the catalyst fulfilled in a way the master could never have anticipated, emerged from the trance, forever changed. The team, battered but unbroken, gathered around her, their bonds strengthened by the trials they had endured. In the aftermath, the manor's secrets were sealed. The artifacts and ancient texts placed under the guardianship of the coalition now, a beacon for those who would seek to understand the mysteries of the unknown without succumbing to the temptation to dominate them. The master's spirit, witnessing the failure of his grand design, found solace in the realization that his beloved was spared the fate he had envisioned for her in a final act of redemption. His essence dissipated leaving behind a lingering whisper of gratitude to those who had ended his torment. The coalition, their mission complete, parted ways, each member carrying with them the knowledge that in the darkest of times, unity and purpose could shine a light that no shadow could extinguish. And so, the tale of the manor, a nexus of untold horrors, and unbridled mysteries, closed its doors to the world, its legacy a reminder of the thin veil that separates the known from the unknown, and the light that can be found even in the deepest darkness.